What's up everyone, Daddy Warbucks here, and today we are continuing our playthrough of Out of the Abyss. The party uh, has found sanctuary inside Blingdenstone, the city of the Deep Gnomes. Uh, and unfortunately, even though the Deep Gnomes have been accepting of, of our uh, goblin group, uh, it's not been without problem. The, the Deep Gnomes have only recently reclaimed their city, uh, after having abandoned it many years ago, and returning to the ruins has proved troublesome. There's pesky ghosts, a clan of were-rats, and the encroaching threat of a figure called the Pudding King. Though the party has been helping the Diggermatok clan reclaim Blingdenstone, and as they have worked their way through the city, they have discovered that the Pudding King and the threat he poses is much greater than they had thought. Uh, the Pudding King is amassing an army and threatens to overrun and overtake Blingdenstone. And so the party has been tasked with going into the Were-Rat Warrens and trying to either eliminate them so that the Diggermatok clan is not fighting a war on two fronts, or at the behest of the... Uh, at, at the behest of the i don't remember her name uh the person <laughs> uh one of the other people in the clan has asked them to try and enlist the gold whiskers so that they can assist them in the fight against the pudding king uh the burrow mother thank you okay um yep you guys are so far out of the way and that is where we pick up today so so the party had just like literally just entered into the area of Blingdenstone that is controlled by the uh, by the Were Rat Clan, and as they entered, they discovered two things. Uh, the first was that the the Were Rats have dug traps and and pit holes and all types of other nastiness throughout the tunnels uh, of their warrens, and uh, our poor Nux had fallen in one of them. And while the party was trying to, to get Nux out of this pit trap, uh, they were ambushed by a set of were-rat guards. So they had just disposed of the, of the guards. They are recovering from that encounter. And that is where we start today. Oof, that's a, that's a lot of words. Okay. So, uh, looking at the map here, let me make sure everybody's on the map. Yes, party is, uh, some of us are gravely wounded. Others of us are unconscious. Uh, what are we going to do? Pull Nox out of the trap. Okay. Uh, it may be a good... Uh, I, I have to find it somewhere. I do believe these are 10 foot. So, <laughs> <our> <laughs> hey, hey Florg, thank you for the resub, brother. Appreciate How you old very is much. our goblin? I remember that being an issue. Uh, well, uh, goblins are usually what three and a half, four feet at the most. If that, no, maybe two and a half to three feet. I will get the rope. Uh, let's see here. I don't have the rope. Who has the rope? Is it Nux? Does he have the pack? Oh, no. No, I have the rope. Oh, there you go. All right. He also has the rope. And I could use my Vand of Wonder. <laughs> Only a 20% chance of accidentally killing Nux. What? what? That's a bit extreme. Here, you're okay. They'll be fine. Totally fine. Just gets the one that shoots gems and just batters his corpse to death. <laughs> right. Oops. Sorry, dog. I didn't mean to kill you. Uh, alright. Let, let's see here. Uh, mother will help lower Dirk into hole. Is it is it just like a flat bottom pit, or are there like spikes in the bottom? Oh, they, remember, uh, there are zerkwood spikes at the bottom. 
though he's currently like half impaled on these uh theoretically he should be making death saves but i think he stabilized in the last uh session i think they healed him at some point but i don't know if he went down again possible i don't know all i know is he's at zero hit points right now yeah i didn't agree to go into the hole well we gotta get nux out of the hole have to. But why is it gotta be? Because you're the strongest one that can actually lift Nux. Correction, I might actually be stronger than you, technically. That's a, that's a mighty assumption. I only have five strength, but he's a small creature. But I'm wearing a, a, a blade, so... Fine, lower me in the hole. All right, hand me, well, hand oiled and Zisrod one, one portion of the rope, and you hold on to the other. How am I supposed to get him out if I hold on to the rope? Well, because then once you get to the bottom, you don't step on the pointy sticks, and then you can tie onto the, you tie next to the rope. And then you hold on to the rope, and then we pull on the rope to drag you back out. Why? Why not just tie the rope on me, and then I'll just hold on to him? That will also work. I just kind of put my arms up, waiting for the rope to be tied around me. I'll tie a rope around him. <laughs> Okay. So, we're not even going to bother uh, making rolls for this. This is silly. Uh, you lower down uh, Nux, Mission Impossible style, and he's able to lower down and, and grab Nux. Now we got to figure out how to unkill Nux. Can either of you use healing magic, or are you all out? What yeah, I... Yeah, just pull him up, and I'll do it. He's out of... Nux is out of the hole. Sure. Yep. And have some healing. Mission accomplished. Wait, hold up. That's too many hit points. Alright, so, with all of that taken care of, what would you like to do? Go to bed. <laughs> what? You just got well, here. Well, first of all, can I look around and make sure there's no other traps and or peepholes? In the area you're standing? No. No more traps. Okay. Haven't moved. Okay, I'm going going to take a step back in and jump over the ho the hole. Not a problem. Actually, it's it's only a ten foot hole. And remember, this map is not to scale because this is a city map. So I mean, that you're able to just kind of walk around it. Mother cannot jump over the ten foot hole. But mother will walk around it. Hey! Thank you for the host, man. Appreciate that very much. Welcome to the stream, everybody. Alright, uh standing in this main area that you can see that this used to be uh like a common area. And that uh there are several burrows in the sides of the walls that have since fallen to disrepair. Uh, there are two avenues where you could leave from this chamber to the northwest and to the northeast. Ok, 
didn't. Do, do we go left or right last time? We should go the opposite way this time. And we go left, him, and I take off. I shall follow behind okay. Nux. Uh, Nux, as you rush ahead, can you roll me a d6, please? I did the rush. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was that was me. Uh, that was dirt, yeah. Uh, dirt. That's what I said. That was a test. See if you guys are paying attention. Perfect. A one. A one is another spike trip. Bleh. Spiked pit trap. So, Derg, uh, there is no save to avoid the pit. You simply fall. You're going to take 11 piercing, and then I need a con save to try and avoid the poison. Jibber jabber, uh, Thim the Enchanter. Uh, thank you for the follows. Welcome to the family. How you doing? Alright, 17 is a pass. And it's half as much damage on a save, so you take 11 poison as well. Uh, and as you kind of... <laughs> as you kind of just rush forward, uh, those of you following behind, you just see uh, Dirk disappear, poof, as he falls into a trap. Uh, and you see that this warren here opens up, and there's going to be a very very disheartening sight uh, because in this chamber up ahead what you see is is almost like uh, in this very big chamber uh, there is a large group of were rats and when I say a large group I mean at a rough estimate there seems to be like 50 of them this some of them are armored all of them carry weapons. Some of them improvise things like uh, shovels, pitchforks, and, and, and makeshift spears. But they all, you can see, they were kind of creeping forward in the direction where you are currently standing as they are alerted to your presence. Right? Uh, you can even surmise they probably heard the conflict that had occurred just a moment ago and are coming to deal with the invaders. So as you kind of run forward, Dirk falls into the trap, disappears. Uh, all of you are left standing, staring at this massive group uh, uh, of enemy combatants. You see one that that is dressed slightly differently. He is uh, just slightly larger, and you can see that uh, his clothing, he's got kind of a, a makeshift sash it's made out of metal interlocking plates uh, but it separates him from the rest he holds his hand up and uh, his hand is just a small fist it's just wait he opens the hand and gestures towards your group peace friends peace Yeah, this piece is good. Maybe, uh... Maybe we should have words. And he kind of wiggles his fingers and it come here. Uh... Sure, I'll approach as I do. I'd like to kind of peek down in the pit and make sure the dirt is not dead dead just temporarily inconvenienced. Uh, Dirk is not dead um the the Zerkwood spears uh that are in the bottom of these pit traps it's the same poison that you guys have already encountered throughout the underdark it's it's that uh the same poison used by the drow it, it's very deadly contact poison but different not very deadly uh that's the opposite of what I'm trying to say uh if a creature is reduced to zero hit points by the poison, remember they are unconscious and stable, uh, but paralyzed and bad for an hour. <laughs> so, unless he is restored, uh, Durg is lying in the bottom of the pit, but he's fine. <laughs> He'll live. So, uh, the 
cat is making trouble. I'm gonna go get her. <laughs> hey, you! Methinks fighting is not an option. Uh, let's see if we can somehow wrangle a cure for this many were rats. So, uh, the, the larger were rat, uh, he stands at the base of these steps here, and he starts walking up to the elevated platform above. Follow. Yes, come on. Uh, all right. As long as we don't step out any more traps. Uh, Dirk, you stay there. We'll be back to get you. I don't think he's going anywhere. Good. Just as commanded. As you guys uh, begin to walk up the steps, he kind of turns around and he gestures to all of the uh, where we're at standing guard. Wait. Be armed. If they try anything funny... First you kill this one, and he points at, at Flash. Then this one, and he points to, uh, <laughs> and, he, and he points to Oiled. And then this one, and he points to Zisran. You kill the casters first, then surround them, make them suffer. sound strategy. Of course. Just, uh, some added insurance. I, but Mother surely you won't be so foolish as to attack us in our own home. Not when I invite you here as a guest. We were also sent here as a guest. Uh, we're a mouthpiece for the gnomes right now. Of course. Of course. Uh, so, straight to brass hobnails, huh? Okay. I'm going to surmise that the Digger Matox sent you here to, uh, get rid of us. Hmm? No, we were sent to, uh, cure you. Can you make a deception check? Aha! That's one of my skills. I can assist, because uh, I'm skilled in deception. It, he rolled a 24. Loud. I mean, it's... Yeah. I think he's okay. Um, establish equilibrium. So we'll just use this one. Um, again. Yeah. So he, he looks at you. Cure us! Cure us? That in itself is a problem. We are not some disease... That needs to be expunged. We are our own peoples. We are the Gold Whiskers, and we are proud. We will not be accepting any cure. You guys are warehots of choice? By choice, no. Many of us were born with this uh, curse. But as it has been in our families for many generations, we have learned to live with it and to use its blessings. For example, we are resistant to, to many forms of damage, things that would kill you or other uh, deep gnomes, as a matter of fact, would barely hurt us at all. It enhances our bodies makes us strong. Why would this be a curse? I don't know. <clears throat> uh, because you're mildly, um, you tend to accidentally infect people when you fight them. That is not true. We infect people if we bite them. Look, uh, look around at my men. What do you see? A lot of bows and spears pointed in our direction. Exactly! We're just as proficient with a weapon as any other deep gnome. Maybe even more so. Which is 
is why the Burrow Warden asked us to seek your help. There's something very dangerous coming. The Pudding King. Yes. We are oh. aware. Sad to say, the Gold Whisker Clan may not be living in Blingenstone for much longer. Whereas those stupid digger matoks can live inside their their walled off portion of Blingden Stone here in the Warrens. We have no barriers. Oozes from the Pudding King's court invade us nearly every day, and we have lost a great many of our peoples. It is true. We would be abandoning our home after long. But if we were to do so, then the Digger Matox would surely die as well. The only reason I would suppose they haven't been overrun already is because the Pudding King is too busy sending his forces at us, and we are a superior fighting force, so he has not yet succeeded. So here is what I want. In exchange for, you know, not killing all of you. I would like you to take me to the Digger Matox. I would have words with them. And I will help defend the Digger Matox warrants from the Pudding King's court if he allows us to continue living here. They're not going to like it, but in either either way, they they either let us live here and we exist and we cohabitate and he's unhappy, or I take my clan and we leave, and then they all die to the pudding king. That seems extremely rational and reasonable. Of course. Uh, just because yeah. I may look like a rat doesn't mean that I am any less intelligent. I would say it's the digger matox that don't use reason and logic. Huh. If I weren't a goblin, maybe I'd be a were rat. So, are we going to the digger maggots? I think we should. We should see if we can get that ghost to come with us, too, because he's also reasonable that we got two people on their side and may make things easier. Excellent. Well then, I will assemble a small uh, cadre of my men and then we will all go and see the Digger Matox. You will ensure that they remain civil and don't attack us. Um, can you by chance uh, just shift into your normal deep gnome form just until we reach the digger matak? He looks at you confused as he is currently a deep gnome. Good enough for me. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Chipgrin, five were rats, uh, and and the were rats, almost seemingly as if to spite your request, uh, they stay in their hybrid form, and uh, they they fish up Dirk, kind of drag him along, and we're all gonna go see, uh, Senny and Corbo, yes. Yes. Yep, good enough for me. <laughs> okay. So as we walk in... Hold on, I have to find which screen my notes are on. Aha! So as we walk in, uh, you can see that the council has already started deliberations. And you can see uh, inside 
the council chambers. Chief Dorbo and Seni, uh, Digger Matak. You also see Nami, Pathshutter, and Gurnik Tapfinger from the Stoneheart Enclave. Uh, Kazook Pickshine from the Miners Guild. And uh, the ghost of Burrow Warden Jaeger. As you walk in with Chipgrin and the Were Rats, they all stop. All except for Dorbo, who immediately points his finger. What are they doing here? Not murdering anybody. You are supposed to get rid of them. Shit, shit. Um, they propose uh, a truce of some sort. A truce? I will hear nothing that they have to say. They send their their rat-like kin to destroy our borders and force their way into into Blingdon Stone. They are more of a menace than the Pudding King. Yes, but the Pudding King doesn't like them either. And in that way, uh, you could make allies with the Were Rats, and then, or I believe they're the Gold Whisker Clan. I think they said you could destroy the Pudding King, and then Blingdenstone would be that much safer. Does anybody else have any arguments for why they should admit the Gold Whiskers? Well, they really need them to help against P uh, Pudding King. If need them. you don't wish to hear them out, they'll leave. And they'll leave the Warrens, too. And then you'll be left here to face the Pudding King Guam. So oh, it would no. be in your interest to hear them. Why would you say that? <laughs> They want them gone. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, no, so now, just, so he he hears this and he goes, "What? It's that simple, huh?" Well, fine. I don't need to hear a word you have to say. Leave. See if I care. A any other arguments? So you gonna let the the the, the where I had to go uh, and let the the booty king attack you from the. Just two sides, because. What do you he... mean? The Pudding King already attacks us. Yeah, but uh, he attacks. Hold, hold up a second. Yeah. Um, uh, I can't remember what the name of the headwear rat was. Chipgrin. It's uh, Chipgrin. Chipgrin. Uh, you said that your wear rat form gave you certain advantages. Would any of those advantages be particularly of help to the uh, deep gnomes of Blingenstone? He, he eyes you, and uh, you can see he's very unhappy with the way things are unfolding. All this chit-chat and howdy-do, it's useless. The Digger Matox will never listen. Yeah, as uh, I was saying, the, the Warheads were holding off to, uh, an attack from the, the Warrens where they leave. If we, he, they go uh, away, the, the Pudding King will have access <coughs> from the, or from Blindenstone from two sides. There's no need for that. We can have the, the, the Warheads take one front, and we take another, and we attack the, the Pudding King from two sides, instead of the Pudding King attacking us from two sides. Okay. So, uh, boiled, uh, wait a minute. So, Nux and Mother, I need you guys to make a persuasion check with advantage. As you presented a uh, solid argument. Was it, was it boiled that said about they would just leave? That was me, yeah. Yeah, you're going to make a persuasion check with disadvantage. <laughs> And, and this is a group check, so we need the majority of the group to pass. Uh, Nux, Zisrod, Nux, is, you just were talking. Uh, Flash, Zisrod, do you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, yeah, um, this is a pretty simple case of the enemy of the enemy is my friend. 
Like you don't have to like to each other, but you have a common foe. You could work together. Okay, make a persuasion check to street. <laughs> Ooh. So now we have two passes and two fails. Uh, Flash, it all comes up to you. Do you have anything you would like to say? And try and convince them. I would like to take a look at the... It was the Burger Warden that gave us the quest to get the get them to help us. And I would like to... Mm, mm, yeah, I would like to ask him if he has any ideas how how deadly the attack could be if the if they can attack us on two sides without the variants. Okay. So, uh, you ask your question to the Burrow Warden. And when you do, uh, Dorbo immediately turns the wheels around and starts to yell, You? You asked them to enlist the Gold Whiskers? How could you do this? And, uh, the, because he he wants to save this place. The burrow He's warden not... looks at, at you guys. He says, "Because no matter what they are now, they are still members of Blingden Stone. We can use their numbers, and the curse gives them strength. They would be very useful on the front lines against." the Pudding King. And you see that when when the Burrow Warden lends his support to, to bringing in the Gold Whiskers, uh, everyone else in the council starts to agree, uh, as the Burrow Warden is very well respected and, and his word carries a lot of weight. Uh, so, Flash, uh, that is going to be a success for you as you brought in the Burrow Warden. Uh, which means... The group check is a, is a success, and you you see uh, Dorbo and Senny kind of look at each other, and then after a moment, uh, Dorbo with pursed lips, still very, uh, you can tell that he wants to scowl. He's trying to hold it back and keep a, st a stoic look on his face. Extends his hand out to Chipgrin, and Chipgrin is going to give a big rat-like smile as he sneers and shakes the hand back. He says, all right, yeah, I can help you. And now, since we're pals, I think I can give you a gift. A gift? And he kind of re recoils and pulls his hand back. What do you mean, a gift? He says, ha, ah, well, as the Gold Whiskers... Share a border with the Pudding King's court? I've had spies checking it out. I can take you to them. If we send a unit, and he kind of looks over at the party, if we can send a unit to attack and take out the Pudding King, then the rest of his army will fall apart. And the Digger Matox turned to the party. You are the best warriors that are here. We so are. Could you do this? We could try. We need a quick rest, and our friend here needs to be taken care of, and I point to Dirk's unconscious body. Uh, but yes. we could do this. There are many preparations to make before the attack. Why don't we take this time, and we'll prepare as much as we can. We'll convene the council for now, and we'll begin trying to fortify our, our fronts and prepare all of our factions. Everyone in the council agrees. Uh, 
why don't the six of you retire to your hut? And we'll call upon you when we're ready. The Goblin Manor. The Goblin. Click to the Gob Cave. Hey, thanks for the biddies, buddy. <laughs> Appreciate that. Alright, so the uh, the goblins are all gonna recut gonna retreat the goblin hut. And uh, from here you are all welcome to take a long rest. As it will actually be several days before uh, the Pudding King makes his move and, and begins the attack. Uh, and during that time, um, all of the groups within uh, Blingdon Stone begin to prepare as best they can. Uh, the Digger Matox start arming the civilians, and they uh, try and reinforce certain areas, hoping to funnel the Pudding King's forces into one main area. Um, the Gold Whiskers, they move their forces out of the Gold Whisker Warrens into Blinkenstone proper. And uh, they begin to intermingle with the uh, the Deep Domes of Blinkenstone. The Gold Whiskers agree to be the first line of infantry uh, opting to be the the shield that protects their weaker cousins from the, the Ooze's attacks. Uh, the Stoneheart Enclave using the power of Entomox Boon and uh, having the ability to summon earthen elementals to bolster their forces begin to to, they spend their days doing just that. They summon a force of Galeb Durs and Earth Elementals to bolster their attacks. Uh, and they use them as kind of a, a ranged artillery. The Earth Elementals and Galeb Durs picking up and chucking boulders at the line of oozes when the time to fight is upon us. They also, since your party is going to be uh, is going to, to to be a group of assassins trying to infiltrate through the the cacophony of battle and find their way to the pudding king uh, you have also been gifted with an earth elemental to assist you on your quest uh, his name is Rocky if in case you were wondering <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Miners Guild, they had intended to use oils made from the fungi of uh, Neverlight Grove to cover the weapons and armor of all the uh, defending forces. Unfortunately, the materials never arrived. And so instead, they, they turned their efforts to trying to make as many weapons as they can. Uh, to try and bolster the equipment available as what everyone is wearing and carrying will surely be destroyed by the acidity of the oozes. Um, as the Miner's Guild gift to the party, they offer to make any mundane armor or weapons, excluding full plate. Is there anything that the party needs? Let me think. If we get two sets of half plate, can we make a set of full plate? No. <laughs> That's not how that works. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> it's a good try. Though. I mean, I could use a half plate. Oh, uh, actually, if we do have time to prepare, um, I do have this bloodstone. If anyone wants to put up to a third level spell on it. You said any mundane, any any so like, mundane uh, armor or weapon excluding full plate. 
they wouldn't have time so, to create such a uh, intricate piece of armor. Could I do splint? Absolutely. I would like splint armor. Yep. Um, I just like to get rid of my prison ship and finally actually take a sickle. Um, just basic, basic weapon. Yep, can do. Yeah, if uh, if it's a mundane armor equipment, you just mark it on your sheet. Uh, the miners guild uh, employs their best blacksmiths and, and uses all of their available ores to make that happen. Uh, also, as you guys completed the tasks for the Burrow Warden Jaeger, uh, he is going to rally the spirits uh, of the fallen deep gnomes. During the battle for Blingdenstone. Uh, one moment, because it's a long list. Oh. No. Okay. During the battle for Blingdenstone, each character can re-roll one attack or saving throw uh, by calling on the fallen spirits of the Deep Gnomes. Uh, they would materialize and distract and frighten your foes, allowing you to gain uh, disadvantage. Disadvantage. Advantage. <laughs> so, this is, it's not inspiration, even though that's how it's worded. Uh, it is a re-roll. So, everybody in the party gets one of those during the battle. And I believe, uh, based on the things that you had accomplished in Blingdenstone, that is it. We have an Earth Elemental Ally, you get mundane equipments, and you get one reroll at one point during the Battle of Blingdenstone. Can I switch my splint for half plate? I realize I don't get heavy armor. Yes. Flesh, not really. This. I can, I can take it. Yeah, you can take it. Okay. All right. Then just add that to your equipment list and I'll take it offline. Right, yeah. So, uh, Bloodstone and Attuned by Zisrod. Did you put a spell in it? I did not. Now remember, this is over several days, so you can put a spell in it, and then still recover and have all your spell slots. I mean, yep. that's kind of the purpose of the gonna, item, right? I was going to put a darkness in it, but if uh, another caster wants to use it, they can certainly have it and put whatever they want. But Seesaw doesn't really need it for anything special. It, It's like a cheap ring of spell strength, Zestrod, except you don't have to stay permanently attuned to it. You only have to attune to it to store a spell. After that, you can unattune, and anybody can use it. I think the item said that you need to have the spell in your spell list to be able to use it. Yeah. So, uh, yes, you need to know the spell or have oh. it on your spell list. So I can like start up dispel magic on it, and and besides, can use those so I can give it to him after that. It's a useful spell. You guys are thinking small. Or you could store a healing spell in it and have an additional one. Or since it's third level, you could put a fireball in it and then you can have three fireballs a day instead of two. Like... <laughs> no fireball here. Still, that's, that's... I don't know. Anyway, we're not wasting any more time on the stone. Put something in it. Don't put something in it. Moving on. What no. I can offer is... Uh, no. Okay, go ahead. I can also Scorcher upcast at level 3. That's like the most useful thing I can offer. Okay. Is it possible to put a one of my Rage Surges into the Bloodstone? No, not a spell. <laughs> Thanks. Alright. Uh... As you guys sit around on the fourth day, you hear a series of loud bangings 
it sounds like rocks smashing on stone. And even though the sound is alien and unfamiliar, you know what it is. The earth elementals and Galeb Durs employed on the front lines are bashing on the walls and on the floor, signaling the arrival of the Pudding King's army. Or just sit around. Yeah. Uh, as <sighs> you guys sit inside your hut, stunned, uh, you can hear the clashing uh, of swords on stone, shouts and cries of pain, and a voice ringing through the halls. Fight for your king! Glory to the faceless lord! As uh, the entire wards are thrown into disarray. I suppose we need to go find the Pudding King now. Yeah, the time has come. Hey, look, it's Rocky. Gonna put new tokens. Ta da! All right, uh, go ahead and roll initiative. Five, who didn't make it? Not nice, splash these red boy. Okay, so there's our group. Uh, the north is going to be where the the direction the enemies are coming from. So you can position your your walking order anywhere within this little clump. Uh, depending on where you would be. Once everyone ready. Yes. <laughs> Triangle. <laughs> the tip of the spear. All right. And uh, just for conversation's sake, you know, because we are in the Warrens, we're going to cut off a portion of the map. There we go. So, so anywhere within those confines is where you have to maneuver and, and run around. Okay. So you guys begin running down uh, to the north, right? Trying to get to the Gold Whisker Warrens and the location of this entrance into the Pudding King's Court. Uh, you have a map to guide you provided by the Gold Whiskers that should take you directly to the Pudding King. As you uh, run, you kind of have to weave your way through little cells of combat as were rats, deep gnomes, elementals, and oozes of all shapes and sizes are, are in various stages of combat. You can't concern yourself with those now. Uh, you have a much more important job to complete. And as you run forward, I'm going to move back a little bit. Uh, as you run forward, in your path are a number of oozes. Uh, grayish slimes that seem to plod forward along the floor and a large black mass that uh, is almost the size of, a, uh, of the elemental and Ooh, there we go all right how did everybody roll an initiative not bad oh flash did terrible sorry my guy I'm going to have to buy more arrows. Oh, yes. All right. All right. Time for shenanigans. Uh, let's see here. 
What's the light level? Uh, far away, through right. all... Remember, all, in the Warrens, the Deep Gnomes have, uh, you know, like, luminescent rocks and stones that shed light on everything. Bright light. Sorry. I forgot it mattered. Uh, is your Dawnblade on Nux? Or no? Not yet. Okay. Then I'm gonna fire... Just two shots, and the last one gets a d8 extra. I'm firing these at the black pudding in the center. Okay. Yeah, both will hit. Why is it always puddings? They eat my arrows! And after that, are you finished? And that's, that's the end of my turn. Oil. I am going to mock mom and pretend to fire an arrow at the same black pudding twice. Oh, man. <laughs> 19, 10. Uh, 10 is actually a hit. Oh, cool. Sweet. Uh, and it, we'll just keep it simple for now. That's it. Yeah, oozes are uh, they're very slow and they're obviously unarmored. Like, I think... The highest AC through all of these encounters is like nine. <laughs> all right. Anyway, the oozes. The oozes move forward, and uh, the one here is going to make a little pseudopod that is going to attack Durg. The other one attacks Rocky. Hey, well, I can see what kind of day this is going to be. After that, Dirt, it is your turn. Pull out my hammer and attack recklessly at the one right next to me. Hit. First attack, and then the second one. Yep, both hit and 22 damage will kill the first of the Grey Oozes. Now I'm going to move up to this one, and that will do. Nux. I'll move to here and attack the Ooze with my Fire Mace. And two. Uh, both will hit and 18 damage. It is a magical weapon, so it is unaffected by the corrosion. Yes, and that's it. Please, Rad. Gonna walk up to here and I gonna a scorch at a big one. Oh, wait. Here. Agonizer Scorcher on just the Black Pudding, right? Yes. Pretty sure I'm Ooh. going to fail. I did. Uh, the fire runs over the ooze, but you can see that it doesn't seem to be affected. Or at least not as much as you would hope. The acid pops and sizzles, and uh, will that be all for your turn? That's all. Rocky! I need to get his sheet open. Like a smart person. Uh, bop! Boom! He punches the Grey Ooze twice. And pulverizes it into the ground. Okay. I will walk forward a little bit, and then it'll be Flash's turn. Okay, let's target it, the big ooze, the pudding. Hold the dead on the black pudding. I didn't, nope. Uh, ooze is not very wise. And, and then, that would be all. Okay. So then the black pudding, on its turn,
it is going to Oh no, sorry, forgot. Uh, it's going to move up right next close. And he's going to lash out with a pseudopod at Zisrod. That's a hit. Four bludgeoning and 14 acid. And if you are wearing armor, which I don't think you are, it gets a minus one penalty. Uh, no, no armor. After that, uh, it would be the start of the next round. And it is at this point that you can see uh, more oozes coming from the direction in which you travel. Uh, this time, it is a large orangish mass. And uh, accompanying it, you can't quite see it, but you've encountered one of these before. So you're able to recognize the distortion in the air that is created by a gelatinous cube. Is it Globagool? <laughs> yeah. Is it? Uh, you, well, you don't see a giant floating pair of eyes in it, so you can safely uh, assume it is not Globagool. Well, that's one plus and one negative. Also, uh, that guy's going to get an arrow. I has... Nux, are you wield... No, you're wielding your flame mace, aren't you? Or yep. is that z -Strut? All right. Uh, let's see. Then I just need a single short bow shot at normal. And this there's is damage. At who? Black Pudding. And that'll be the end of my turn. Okay. Spoiled. Well, they seem to have that putting pretty much in control. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and attack the yellow one back here. Uh, 14 and a 28 to hit. Nice. Apparently I didn't have this shoot. Okay, so 14, 20, nice. Yikes. I would appreciate if you quit uh, killing all my monsters. That'd be super swell. I'll try. My bad. Okay. Uh, finished? Yeah, that's my turn. The gray oozes are dead. So, Derg? Just gonna hit the one right in front of me. Sixteen will hit, or fourteen that will kill the black pudding. I'm going to move up, and that's it. Sucks. I'll move to the yellow pudding and attack with my fire mace. One and two. Nice. <laughs> All right. Well, at least you got those out of the way. That's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, look, it's, it's a, a jelly. A... Uh, we're gonna we're gonna pseudopod Nux. Lap. Uh, that's a miss. A miss. Yeah. Yikes. I have twenty-one armor. <laughs> All right. Uh. Then that is it. Zisrod? Ah. Uh. Hmm. No, I'm gonna stay here and ray of force the yellow one. And walk a few feet back. 
All right, the gelatinous cube is going to do gelatinous cube things. 10, 15 is going to move over on, uh, on top of Nux. And, well, you are now subjected to the cubes engulf. Uh, you can make a deck save to try and avoid being swallowed up. Hey, so move yourself uh, five feet uh, in adjacent square. And then, since that didn't work, it is going to uh, flap. That's a hit for eight acid. And after that, it'll be Earth Elemental's turn. So it's going to move forward and attack the gelatinous cube. Too many sheets. My stupid. There it is. Twenty nine. And then after that it'll be Flash's turn. Okay, I'm going to move a little bit and toll the dead the yellow one. Toll the dead the ochre jelly. Twelve is a fail, it takes fourteen and dies. Okay, um that would be all. All right. Uh, at the end of Flash's turn, it is again another round, and this time, what you see, very, very alarming. Uh, a number of creatures kind of squeeze through the cracks in the rock and stone that compose the walls of the chamber. As they do, they form immediately adjacent to most members of the party as a second ochre jelly and a number of gray oozes materialize uh, and as they squeeze through and they drop down from the ceiling uh, you see another creature pushing its way through the wall and as it does, you hear, yes, 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 yes. Oh, please don't say it's him. It's no. Him. No. All right. Let's. There we go. Sovereign. <laughs> Uh, you thought this would stop me, but I have magic. I cast Zephyr Strike. Uh, let's see. Yep, I can run away. Which means... I run 25 feet that direction. Let me check which what I'm in range of. I'm going to shoot this one here. Let me just check the wording on this. Okay, I'm gonna give myself advantage on this shot. Yeah, 13. That does that and does an additional D8 for Zephyr Strike. Nice. And I'm not gonna action search, I'm just gonna take that one attack. And that'll be the end of my turn. All right, oil. I like to pretend I'm a tough goblin, but I'm not. So nimble escape and back off just so I'm not near mom uh and shucks um I guess we'll just go for the one that's already been wounded right here okay, that's a real spell here we go uh 12 and a 12 to hit 
And that will kill the Greaves. Nice. And that'll do it for me in this room. Sure. I'm going to attack the... Um... Man, I just forgot his name. Big brown guy. Ochre Jelly. Uh, I'm going to rage first, because I've been forgetting to do that. What? Alright, here we go. Shenanigans. What is a two? I teleport. As a bonus action, you can teleport within 40 feet? 30. Okay, and then you can continue to do that each turn, right? Yep. And oh. then um, I'm going to hit him. Uh, ochre Jelly? Yep. All right, let's see that swing. For six damage. And 13, so 19 in total on the Ochre Jelly. That's it. Okay, I'll use my fighting spirit and I'll attack the gelatinous goo, my mace. One, okay. two, and then I'll action surge and keep attacking. Another 20. Not bad at all. Then I'll move here. And that's my turn. Alright. The gray oozes. Who's that? Uh, they... <laughs> going to move forward. And we're going to attack Derg and then Zisrod. <coughs> Excuse me. So, Derg. 17? miss your token shows AC 16 I want to correct that forgot to update all right and then Zisrod that's a miss too lucky then our ochre jelly uh well we're still next to dirt so we're gonna do the pot miss I mean they're jellies how hard can they be uh this Rod, you are up. Okay, um, gonna measure something. No, I thought it wouldn't work. Um, walk up here. Another Agonassa's uh, Scorcher to the south. Straight south, and then uh, nimble escape my way, hide behind. So that's the ochre jelly and the gray. You group X zero and twelve. They both fail. Take sixteen fire. Oh my god! How are they? Okay. Finished? Yep. Right, the gelatinous oob. 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 Going to try and uh, engulf. Hold on. Too many character sheets. Going to try and engulf once again. So make a deck save, Nux. Nineteen is pass, so get pushed again. Again. Oops, Opod. Rocky. Rocky's gonna take four acid. Uh, then we have 
Rocky's turn. And boop that. Thirteen and twenty-one will both hit. Twenty-eight killing the gelatinous cube. And flash. What would you like to do? Okay, this might be bad, but I'm going to use the radiance of dawn. So each hostile can each other within 30 feet. So I don't know if Glabagul is hostile, but well, if he is, he must so make a concept. You need to determine that, right? Are you including Glabagul in the Radiance of Dawn? Okay, if I get the choice, then no. Okay. Alright, so every other ooze. And it's just those three. Uh, they are going to... Is it a wisdom save? Is that what you said? Uh, Constitution uh, DC 14. So fail, fail, pass. And it's 16 damage because that that didn't at my level. Okay. Not a problem. Uh, the ochre jelly passed. Does it take half? Half on a success. So he takes eight. And I'll move a little bit to be more between the O's and C. And that would be all. Okay. It is Glabagul's turn. And you see him moving forward. Yes, yes, yes. And as it approaches Durg, you can see a pseudopod forming as if it's going to strike. But the tendril wavers in the air. Oh! Friend? Friend! No, no, no! And Glavagul turns around and is going to send that pseudopod out towards the ochre jelly. Uh, which is a hit. What? But I don't think it's going to do it. <laughs> but he's on your side now. All right. Uh, Sovereign. It's a good thing I didn't shoot Glavagul. He's friendly. Uh, so Let's see, I'm gonna just shoot that one. Because why not? Which one is that one? The one I pinged, the black pudding. I wasn't looking at the screen. Uh, hey, it dies. That is the end of my turn. Alright, uh, oil. Alright, uh, since he's established himself as friendly, I'm gonna move over this way and just shoot at the ochre. And that is going to be enough to kill it. Nice. And uh, at this point there is a lull in combat. Uh, you have cleared the path allowing you to progress uh, following along the path that, that you have been given to find the Pudding King. So we're going to clear the combatants. Uh, is anybody going to do anything? I'll give Z a small heap of 10 HP. Oh, that's a big heal for me. Thanks for the uh, assist, Glab. Much appreciated. Friends! Friends! Yes, 
Lawrence, what are you doing here? Ah, uh, hmm. Uh, after friends get lost, Glabagool wander. Yes, yes. <sighs> something, something near. Hmm. 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 Well, we have to go uh this way, I think. Yes, yes, that way. That is where it is. I don't like the sound of it, but uh do you have any idea what it is, Glabagool? No, no. It is that way. Go, go, yes. Is everyone finished with healing and gathering thingies? Good to go. All right, that way. Lead the way, Glabagool. Uh, so you're walking at a trying. slow pace? Uh oh. I knew you were going to say that. No, we're not walking in a slow pace. Fast pace is all. all right, so Glabagool would be behind the group. Trailing. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have to leave Glabagool once more. Alright, and we are, I heard, we're traveling at a fast pace, correct? Yes. Alright. Uh, can everybody yeah, just let me check do my me features. a favor for no reason whatsoever? And put your passive perception into the chat. For no reason. Uh, we are a perceptive bunch. Is this related to the terrain, or is this like looking for traps? Because I, just then put I, I your, to... your passive perception into the chat. Well, it's just because I have my ranger stuff, so I don't know if I had advantage. Um... No, you don't. It has nothing to do with the terrain or traps. Okay. So we have... 12. So let's see. Moving at a fast pace gives you disadvantage on perception checks. I didn't know if you knew that. Uh, which means whatever your passive is, it's minus 5. Which means... Bing, 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 bing. Even Sovereign's 11 is not high enough to detect the black oozes that are hiding in wait for you to approach. Which means the party is surprised. Oh no. Oh yes. Uh, go ahead and re-roll initiative. Maybe some of you who sucked in the first round will do a little bit better. Dang. No. For five. Boy. Nope. Boy's in there. Sovereign. Aha. Uh, then we're going to get Rocky and Glabby. <laughs> All right. Surprise. 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 Puddings. So the puddings. If you could guess it, they're going to pseudopod people. Flash. 18? That's a miss. Pretty sure new half plate. Half plate and shield. And then uh, Nux, also a miss. So much for that surprise, right? Uh, surprise, surprise, surprise. Then it goes to Sovereign. Aha! But oh, they should have been with advantage. Uh, they were attacking from being unseen. I don't think it'll matter. 14, 18, yeah, both. I think the 18 would hit. Next. No, it doesn't. Old miss. All is good. That surprise round counted as a turn in combat? It was your first turn in combat, yes. Okay. Then, yeah, I just get one shot at the leftmost. Uh, still a hit? Arrow is destroyed. And that's the end of my turn. What? No way. Uh. Failed. 
Uh, just this one right here in front of Nox. I'm gonna shoot it twice. Using nimble escape, leaving and pull the dead on the left one. I don't even know why I wrote and... the minus two. <laughs> oh! Alright! A wise pudding. <laughs> and that would be all. Next. Okay. I'm going to attack the pudding in front of me with my fire mace. Fire mace, fire mace. One and two. And that's my turn. Okay. And dirt. I'm going to. Going to run around to here and rage. Okay. That's the wrong one. Yes, it is. Five. Whenever a creature hits you with an attack, they take a d6 force. Magic thorns. And then I'm going to attack the one to this one. Both will hit. 21, 3, 5. Okay. And that's it. Puddings. Uh, I guess we're both gonna pseudopod Gerd. Why not? Blip. Boom! Hey! Oh. <laughs> so, you're gonna take three bludgeoning, two raging, and, uh, 42 acid! Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> also, your armor gets a minus one penalty, so your AC is reduced. Uh oh, good thing that armor was free. Yo. Uh, how much do you have? Forty-two. Yeah, four. So three piercing, or piercing, bludgeoning. You take that first. Yeah, I got it. And then you take forty-two. Very, very hurt. <clears throat> uh, that was both of my puddings. So, Zisrat. Walking to here, exactly. And casting Aganasa Scorch of Freedom. If, uh... I understand. Yep, uh, it's 30 feet range, so it doesn't hit the walk elemental. How? I don't think. This doesn't originate from your square, it's from in front of you. Eh. It's a it's, it's a giant rock monster, he'll be fine. He'll be fine, okay. I want the level free. Ooh. Might not be free. Alright, let's see it. Eighteen fire. No, that's us. Deck save. They all fail and take 18. How are they not resistant? Risen to like everything else. Yeah. Puddings hurt bad. Okay, let us move on. Uh, 
Uh, Rocky. Rocky Smash. Uh oh. Mark the shit down. Go quick. Go. Clap, clap. Both will hit. For 23 damage. I just remember, Rocky's attacks are not magic. There we go. And then here comes Glabby. He's gonna walk up and friend, friend! And Pseudopod, the one in front of it, it's immune to acid damage, so <laughs> good job, Glabby. Uh Sovereign. Oh, let's see. I'm gonna shoot that one again just because. Yeah. I wish they would stop eating my arrows. I don't see that as well. Oh, wait a minute. I am sorry. Uh, that was the end of the round. And at the end of the round, you hear a voice again shout out, For your king! Glory to the faceless lord! Uh, the inslime... Inslime? Insane slime-covered deep dome points at you. Tackles. Devour them, my precious children! Make your father proud! He then bolts out of sight as two oozes drop from the ceiling in front of you, their dark forms flowing in your direction with an unsettling awareness and malevolence. All right. But yeah, that attack at this one, Still that's the end of my turn. Not changing? Cool, cool, yep. cool. All right, uh, 11 damage to the Black Pudding. And are you you finished? Yes, you are. Foiled. Uh, I'm just going to go for this one right here in front of Nux. Um... That's just what we'll do. Uh, 15 and a 23 to hit. And then I'll just move over here a bit. And that'll be my turn. 15 and 23 for 15 minutes. All right, Flash. Okay, let's pull out the big guns. What? How dare you? I would like to place a fireball in that position to not hurt my allies. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, go ahead. 23 fire, so... Mm -hmm. Deck save, they all fail. But you see the gray ooze not impacted nearly so much as you had hoped. Okay, and that would be all. Thanks. Okay, fire mace to the black booting. A uh, hit and a dead pudding. Okay. And then, 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 then. Uh, I'll move to next to the reuse. And that's my turn. Third. I'm going to run up and attack this one now. Okay, uh, both of those will hit. However, on each hit, you take 8 acid damage. So, you would lose 16 HP for the course of your attack. And it will take 24. Um, never mind. That doesn't proc my thing. Uh, 
and that's it. Great. Please run. Um, yeah. Moving a bit up, and we are frost this one. The frost on Prince Livid? How dare you! Okay, uh, it's a hit, but again, you see the cold just doesn't seem to affect you. Okay, that's my turn. Uh, the Prince. Uh, you see this, this gray slime pile. It kind of surges in Nux's direction and begins to wiggle wildly. And, uh, Nux, you can feel something assaulting your mind. I need you to make an intelligence save, please. Oh, no. Intelligence is not my fourth. You take 10 psychic damage. And oh. the prince can move away without taking any attack of opportunity. He can only move 10 feet, though, so it's not going to get very far. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, then Princess Ebenmeyer, uh, she, yep, uh, she is going to hurl a blob at Durg. Thirteen is a miss? Yes. Yes. Yep. All right. Uh, the Earth Elemental moves forward, and uh, as it does, it is going to attack Princess Ebenmeyer. Bop, bop. Ooh, we! 32. Damn. And then Glabagol. I will help my friend! Yes, yes, yes! Uh, dashes. Makes it right there. Sovereign? Oh, let's see. I'm gonna shoot that pudding that's trying to murder Dirk. No. Uh, I need goblins that are alive. Not Princess Ebenmeyer! I need alive goblins to be my meat shields, darn it. Oh, that's... But it saves Drew's life, doesn't it? Uh, well, it's still alive. Uh, oiled. Well, we can change that. They can run, but they can't get far enough. Uh, I'll go for the black pudding this time. Okay, two hits and Princess Ebenmeyer. Dead. Don't whip up a little and come to it. Hey, uh, Flash. Okay, um, am I able to move to that location now that Labakul has made his way on between us? Uh, if you'd like to move through Glabagul, would not recommend Don't! Hmm, I guess not. You may be two sizes bigger, but you still get stuck. <laughs> okay, let's tolerate these last doors. Hold the dead on Prince Livid. Fails. Takes 20 necrotic. And Jesus. And dies. Uh, as Prince Livid dies, you see that his form kind of surges and he disgorges what appears to be a pair of books. Did you say books? That is what I said. Books. Yeah, I'll I'll go take a look. They 
appear to be a pair of spell books with covers made from troglodyte hide and pages made from uh, Trilomac fungus. You see the Ooh, covers the are coated with a magical varnish that renders them immune to the acid damage and thus have is the reason why they have survived so long. Uh, the, in the cover, you can see that both spell books were authored by a deep gnome named Lesla Carowell. And there are a large number of wizard spells swapped out down below. Which... Do do do. Do do. Right there. That's a lot Oof, of stuff. God. That's a lot of spells. The wizard can copy and paste that somewhere. Because I'm sure they'll want to hang Put on it to those. Under other possessions. <laughs> or and notes. You know what's a real big shame about it? You don't have the gold to copy the, the spells. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so you guys have another moment. And you are at the door of the Pudding King's Chamber. Flash! I need help. Of course you do. And I guess I'll have to heal him a little bit. Okay. And let's use another third slot. Third level slot. Give him some healing. And then we can hear the Pudding King Cackling Thank you. from up above. Time to proceed. Uh, as you move into the Pudding King's court, you can see he's cowering behind. You know behind. what? You need Just one more. Excuse me. Uh, as you move forward into the Pudding King's chamber, you can see that he is cowering behind a slime-covered throne. As he's chortling and laughing madly. Hello, Kale! Now you can join the party! You can be one with the faceless lord! Just let yourselves be eaten and disgorged! And, uh, you can hear he begins to chant behind the throne. I need everyone to roll initiative, please. If only I had silence. Wow, I rolled really badly. Uh, one second. Open. Three, four, five, six. The Pudding King. Flabby. And the Earth Elemental. Alright. Short. Start. Nux. What would you like to do? Um, I'd like to... Run to the booty king. Yeah. I'll use my dash. I'll use my action to dash. Okay. And that's my turn. Flash. Okay, I'll use my bonus action to use Necklace of the Gajak Beats and cast Bless on Dark. Oiled and sovereign. All right, mark yourselves as blessed. Then I'll move and I'll let it. The 
six nine. And that would be all. Boiled. Alright. Okay, um, just barely being able to see him, I'll go ahead and shoot him twice, it's not slurring you up there. Uh, 18 and a 27 to hit, and I do have repelling blast, I don't know if that's going to affect or not. Uh, well, okay. Uh, 13, even with cover, those will both hit. And, yeah, we'll knock him back 20 feet. Sorry, Nux, didn't even push him back even farther, but, yeah. Uh, that'll, that, that'll do it for me. Okay. Derg. Can Derg possibly make it in time? I can. I'm going to dash. Does Drug not possess any throwing weapons? Any weapon's a throwing weapon if you throw it hard enough. I have 80 feet of movement. I can make it there. And... I'm gonna rage. You get plus one to AC. Cool. And any ally within 10 feet gets the same bonus. Finished? Yep. Excellent. So the Pudding King will take his turn. And uh, he, he smiles. You dare! You dare! To face the faceless king, you will pay, you will die, and he's going to throw his hand out, and as he does, uh, you see that all the walls in this chamber, they are covered in, in this greenish slime, right? A patch of it is going to fall down right between Nux and Durg. And as this green slime falls and hits the ground, it immediately begins to evaporate, spewing up into the air as this large greenish cloud. As he casts Cloud Kill, centered between the two of you. Huh. Oh, but wait. There's more. Uh, let me just put this... 20 foot radius circle. Yeah, I totally put it on the map. It's just taking a minute. <laughs> uh, he is then, as a bonus action, there we go. He places it right here. He peeks out from outside the cloud kill and he reaches towards Flash. And as he reaches, you see again the green slime. It's almost like it's obeying his call. As he makes a gesture as if he was ripping something from the ceiling, the slime drops again on top of Flash. Flash, I need a deck save as, uh, li quite literally, you are affected by green slime. 15 is a pass, uh, and it's saber suck, so nothing happens. But you can see it's now bubbling and hissing on the ground uh, right below you. We'll mark that with the... Uh, why not? Let's... There's there's green slime right there. Alright. And then he ducks back inside the cloud kill. And... Sovereign. It's your turn. Is the cloud heavy obscurement? Cloud kill is heavily obscured. Yes. Ooh. First of all, I gotta advance a little bit so I'm in range. I am now in range. I'm gonna cast Zephyr Strike. On my first shot, I'm gonna give him 
give uh, no, actually I'm going to use a normal shot for the first one at disadvantage. Okay. And then if he is what, still oh, alive. I'm out. I'm out. Because that's that's the uh, a whole issue of uh, heavily obscurement makes it so that you are blinded if you are within the radius. Right? You are also hidden so can you even see him? To target him with an attack because remember if you're making a ranged attack against a target you cannot see you're essentially just shooting in the dark there's no guarantee that you're just going to make an attack and hit him i was firing at his last position because i didn't see he hadn't run out of the cloud so i was firing at where i would have last seen him before the cloud appeared right well where he's positioned on the map is not where he is i didn't bother moving him because i gotta move the cloud and i gotta grab him and then i gotta shove him to the dm layer uh, see, that's, All right. that's annoying. <laughs> then I have no means of seeing where he is, so uh, I won't make my second shot then. Well, no, you would. You can still shoot, but you have to. It, it's just, it's a crap shot, right? So I think. Uh, one, two, three. Let's just roll. Roll me a percentile die. I, I have a number in my head. If you get the correct percentile, that wasn't it, then then you would uh, happen to strike him. And then your second shot, uh, having the first one fail, you can try again, and we'll have a better chance because, well, we know he's not in the first location, so try the second. This is a straight roll because I'm using Zephyr Strikes Advantage. Didn't you have advantage on the first one? No, that was disadvantage because I was shooting into a heavy obscurement. Okay. Well, where's your percentile die? There. Hey! Uh, he cries out in pain, or he would if he didn't cast shield. <laughs> but you do know that he is in this row. Okay. All right. Labagool. Labagool starts running forward his ten feet. And he goes, oh, oh no, my friends! Oh! <laughs> and he starts to shake wildly as something seems to grab hold of him. Zisrod, what would you like to do? Mm, move up to my maximum movement and... Um... Oh. Prepare an action if he pops up into my vision within Scorching Way range. I'd like to use it. Okay, so if you can see him, Scorching Ray. Concentrating on the. Uh, gonna move 50 feet, stand outside a cloud kill. Nux, at the beginning of your turn, you need to make a con save or take 22 damage. Okay, uh, on a pass, you take half, so take 11, please. Okay, I'm going to use my, 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 uh, second wind. Uh, wind, second wind, nice. And I'll move, 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 move here, and I'll try to attack somewhere. See if I hit the, the guy. Okay. Uh, from where you're currently standing, uh, he is not adjacent. I missed the first attack. Then you can move and try again. Okay, I'll uh, move a little bit more and try again. All right. Go ahead and make your attack roll straight. Because uh, you can't attack. see him, he can't see you. Where's my... All right. 
Uh, 26. Uh, that. You hear him. Ooh! And he's <laughs> going to make a con save. I'm going to add my 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 fear of the small to that too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> fear of the small. And sure. Yes. And after well, that, you guys, five, six, five. Yeah, that five. I'll... Yeah. Okay. Uh, after that I'll move out of the cloud. Alrighty. That's my turn. Flash. Okay, I'll attempt to dispel magic the cloud. <gasps> How dare you! That is a level 5 spell, you're gonna have to roll for it. Yeah, so, wisdom... Back up to 5. <gasps> That's okay, it was a good... that was a good thing to do. That was, uh... Um... You said at the beginning that we had the... Some kind of technical system. Was it on attacks and saves? Attacks and saves. Okay, yeah. Okay, then I'll move a, move a little and that would be all. Oiled. Uh, tough spot. I don't really have much I can contribute. I'm going to move ahead. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, what the hell? I'll spend my action and just dash and move another. Right there, and we'll call that a turn. Third? Beginning your turn, make so, a con save. Fourteen? Is a pass. You take eleven. What is the... Oh, bless. So... If Nuxious hit him in... Would I have been able to hear him, like, get he's, hit? He's somewhere to the right of you. Alright, I'm gonna make an attack. Reckless. Which square? This one. The one directly to the right. Uh -oh. Like, adjacent me. Uh-oh. Take your attack. And it's just... It would just be a normal roll, because you already mm -hmm. have advantage and disadvantage. Because vision rules are stupid. Uh, unfortunately, neither of those are going to hurt him, as he is currently shielded. Hmm. hmm. You have plus. It, I do have plus. Matter. Dang. Alright, that's it. Wait, uh, actually, the second one would. You, you have to roll really well. But roll your d4 from the bless. That's, That's a decent. That's not how that works. Oh, all right. Uh, that is a hit. Uh, Fury the small. Stop it. <laughs> so extra five damage. Uh, as you hit, the cloud disappears, and. The body of a small deep gnome appears before you. He reaches up weakly. You haven't won. We will rise from our children. We will be reborn from the faceless lord. As Jublex will consume the banquet of the queen of fungi. We will... Bro. I'm gonna hit him again. <laughs> Shut up. Alright. And with that, my bet is over. Quick, loot the body. We're gonna loot the body. Uh, well, on his prop person, he doesn't really have anything of value. Uh, inside his throne room, there is a, uh, there's the throne obviously, but in front of it is a small ottoman. Seems to be made out of a petrified, uh, fungus.
Hmm. Why there's no loot in here? I am disappointed. Oh, all right then. So then, what are you doing? Are do you see? Does the ottoman have like hinges? Do you know what an ottoman is? I just assumed it was like a footstool. It is. I didn't it know they like all had footstool. hinges. Does it have hinges? No, no, it doesn't have hinges. But it'll look nice. Do hard. you? Here, let me let me ask you a question. Do you want to look at it? And use your yes. eyeballs and look at the. It it looks like it has a top that can be removed, as many ottomans do. You just kind of lift up the top. Getting very aggressive about this. <laughs> I left off the top of the ottoman. Because okay, so not not all ottomans have let Gomo removable top. Make all the decisions, and he just went, "Oh well, shit, there's no loot." But it's like I just told you, there is a container, like five feet in front of you. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you said ottoman, and uh, Lane, we own an no. ottoman, and it. And can you up. remove the top of it? Yes. No, you can't. <laughs> The, 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 one the, in, one in the, the one in the bedroom. That's, oh <laughs> that's basically a milk crate. Okay, uh -huh. don't... Uh-huh. Anyway, would you like to look inside of it? Yes! Nothing! Because you uh, annoyed the DM. <laughs> I kid. Uh, it looks to be a receptacle for all of the Pudding King's wealth. Uh, inside, you find 55 gold pieces... 30 Electrum pieces, uh, a a potion uh, that contains reddish liquid, looks very familiar to everybody, uh, two spell scrolls written on sheets of dried fungi, conjure minor, no, no, I didn't want to click that, no, uh, conjure minor elementals and something else because I closed my notes, and... Uh, speak with plants, uh, and it looks to be an eyeball about the size of your fist, and it and it's petrified and it's been polished and lacquered. It's very, 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 very nice. Sir, we need you to lick this. What? I haven't licked the eyeball. I I'm not. I'm not licking that. Lick it. Do it. I think it's one of those eyeballs made out of candy, Derek. Candy? I want to lick the eyeball. Does it taste like candy? Uh, what would it taste like? I think it would taste like, uh, like spoiled meat. It's not pleasant. Um, is it magical? It is magical. It is has... anything within 60 feet magical? It has an extremely potent aura of divination magic. I want to, like, hold it so the eyeball's facing me and look at it. Tell me your secrets. I mean, you don't cast identify, cast magic. It has divination magic. I want it to work. That's all you know. Magic eyeball. Magic eyeball. Magic is there anything eyeball. else? Uh, other than, uh, I guess the potion is magic. Would have a aura of. Ah, okay. Well, this would help. Uh, it's a reddish potion. It looks like a healing potion, and you would assume it to be so. But it doesn't give Wait off. Wait a minute. It doesn't give off a conjuration aura. It gives off an aura of necromancy. Don't drink that. Wait a minute. Didn't the Pudding King literally just throw himself into a cloud of poison? Yes. I think. <laughs> what would a man who fears no poison have in his trunk? <laughs> Electrum, apparently. Not gonna drink this one. <laughs> you guys have ascertained correctly oh, no. it is a potion of poison.
does somebody else want this eyeball, or am I going to have to hold on to it? Uh, mother can hold it if you don't want it. I mean, I think I is it wrong to put it in a backpack? No. I'm gonna put it in the backpack. My backpack. Actually, no. Given it's mom, I don't want to hold this thing. Uh, with the Pudding King's death, Lavagol seems to return to his senses from whatever it was that that had started to affect him. I know you guys were really worried about that. Thought I would, you know, get out there. Oh yes, Clubagul. Are you okay? Yes, yes, yes. Well, you see, now we're faced with problem. If we bring him back to the village, we're liable to shoot Clubagul on sight. Uh, what do now? We killed the Pudding King. We killed a bunch of puddings. Is there any other worrying things in the immediate vicinity? You you completed your job, right? Back to Blingdenstone! There you go. Jeez. Uh, as you head back, you can see that the chaos of the battle seems to have died down. Uh, whereas before, the battles raging all around the city seemed to be very evenly matched as the Deep Dome struggled against the, the coordinated forces of the, all the oozes and slimes. You see now, things have fallen to disarray in that the uh, forces combined the Deep Gnomes and the uh, where rats, it would come bolstered by the earth elementals, are easily overpowering the now discordant and defunctional oozes. It isn't long before the threat is pushed back entirely, and the citizens of Blingenstone have a moment to rest and to celebrate. Uh, at this point, the deep gnomes laud your party as heroes. You're offered to, to stay inside the, the hut as long as you would like. And if you continue to spend your time in Blingdenstone, you have a, a period of peace as there's no pressing conflict. Uh, you can choose to stay for a number of days and your drow pursuers would lose you entirely as you're no longer traveling about the Underdark in a panic trying to throw them off your scent. Yeah, let's do that. Let's lose the drop pursuers for good. <laughs> for good. So we live here the rest of our lives. No. The end. I mean, is that what you guys want to do? That can be the end. Mother does not want. Mother is too large. Huh. So, I would imagine you would stay for some time right? Be it weeks or months, it doesn't really matter. But what eventually would be your plan after that? Would you leave Blingdenstone? And for why? Well, I gotta imagine the gnomes get pretty annoying after a while. I mean, we're not we're not gnomes. We're not meant to live here among these people. Goblins are flung on the surface doing bandit stuff. Imagine how it goes is we stay a few weeks, then Dirk gets into trouble and we get cast out. Why is it I'm the one that would get in trouble? Uh, nothing. How about we find a strong female elven warrior and we call her Dad, and that creates conflict. It's going to lead us here. But she's female. Why would we call her dad? Well, we're not going to talk about this, Dirk. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, 
that might be a place to end for today. While the party is in a period of rest and recovery, uh, for successfully defending the city of Blingenstone, everybody gets to, to level up. And uh, I'm assuming during during this period, somebody would try to discern what the crystal ball is. And uh, you discover it is crystal ball of true scene. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, thank you guys for hanging out. Appreciate you being here. Uh, if you enjoyed the stream, make sure you hit that follow button. If you haven't already, join us in the Discord. That's where we hang out through the week. That's where you need to be if you want to get involved in the game. Also, thank you, Justin, Kyle, Cranky Brown, Fabulous, uh, Fabuloso Ham, Jibber Jabber, the Dane Enchanter, and Dead Aussie Gamer. Appreciate all of you for the support, the subs, the the raids, the bits. Really means a lot and helps keep the stream going. So thank you again. Uh, Goodbye, everyone, and I will see you next time.